Hello everyone. I thought for our watercolor project this week we could paint a little teapot and teacup. And we're gonna do it um, drawing it ourselves in a very um, just sort of loose way. And I am just gonna draw a teapot from my head. And you can do the same. You can. Um, it's going to be, how do I say it? it they, they look charming when we draw them from our heads. You can also, if that scares you, you can Google teapots or Japanese iron, iron teapots, um, and you'll find all sorts of wonderful shapes that you could look at while you're drawing your teapot, if you're unsure. But something that makes this kind of drawing, drawing charming is that um, it's maybe a little bit askew, you know, and not quite perfect. Think about Van Gogh's chair. <laughs> it's clearly a chair, and it's one of the most delightful chairs ever painted, um, but it's clearly askew, right? Just like his bedroom. I mean, so when we draw things from our heart, from our memory, um, they become very authentic and beautiful. So I'm not going to give you a reference image, and I'm not using a reference image. Um, I'm just going to draw it from my, um, from my heart and my head, okay? So for materials for this, um, you can use black watercolor, you can use black ink. I have here um, platinum carbon ink and I have uh, Winsor Newton India ink. Um, you could use just any black ink, it doesn't matter. You could use a dark blue ink with sparkles in it if you wanted to. Um, you could use any ink or black watercolor, okay? We just want something dark. Um, and then saying that, you don't even have to do that. You can make it any color you want. I just really love black teapots. So that's what I'm going to do. And then my rule, and it doesn't have to be, and it's not even a rule, my, my way of doing it is when I do something black like that, I add two things. I add a touch of really bright, clear color, and I add a touch of sparkle. All right, so I have here a little dot card that I'm actually going to wet because um, these take a while to soften up, so. I'm going to put a little bit of water on there. So I add a little bit of sparkle and I add um, a little bit of a clear bright color, like a clear transparent bright color. And it just elevates the black a little bit. And I'll show you how I do that as we move along. Um, and then we'll also need just our watercolors because you can paint your teapot however you want. I'm actually going to draw mine with pencil. And, um, and then I'll just put a little bit of... Um, clear, you know, brown paint in the, in the inside for the tea. So I'm not crazy about this pencil, actually. I grabbed it, but I'm going to use this one. So just use a regular number two pencil to draw your teapot, okay? And you can use a mechanical, but it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. So I'm going to start <clears throat> um, by drawing the bowl of the teapot, but I'm, I'm going to actually start by drawing a spiral. And this is just cold pressed watercolor paper. You can use anything. And then I'm going to make it sort of bigger on the bottom, like that. But I want my curves to match, so that's why I do that kind of spiral thing, okay? And then I might even make it a little bit bigger because I've got room. Alright, so I'm just making sort of a spiral shape that's a little narrower on top and rounder on the bottom. And I'm going to bulb this out. I just want it to be kind of round today. And I'm also keeping it simple for you, okay? So it's a round teapot. And then <clears throat> On the top, I'm going to, this is another circle, and then there's going to be a knob on the top. Just something like that, okay? Very simple. And then I'm gonna put a handle on it. So I'm gonna put the handle about right here, and I'm gonna put two little, 
lobs like that, and then the handle is going to come out. Maybe go out like this, go around. Don't want to have to be perfect, and then come in over here. And then I want to go ahead and make it um, thicker. And I'm going to make it thinner on the sides, thicker on the top. Okay, most of my Japanese teapots have that. Um, and then thinner as it goes down here. So really simple. All right, and don't worry about the pencil because we're using black paint and it will be absolutely fine. And then I'm gonna draw draw the spout. And so the spout is gonna come out right, right about here. All right, and it, it can come out and come down and sort of hit the teapot like that. And we can either see it, the roundness of it, or it can be sort of hidden. Doesn't matter, it's all gonna sort of blend in. And then of course I've got the little oval area where it gets poured from, okay? And your spout can look however you want it to look, okay? And then next to it, I'm gonna draw a little cup. So I'm gonna do a Japanese style cup. So small for green tea. And just as, again, an oval, bring it down, connect the dots. Make sure that bottom is curved like here, okay? And then inside, I'll draw a little line where the T is going to go. All right. And I don't know. I mean, you can just keep it really simple. That's what I do. I like that. All right. So that's as simple as I make it. And every time I do a teapot, it's a little bit different. Sometimes I do one that's really triangular. I mean, they're always different. Sometimes I do the squishy ones where they're kind of squished and then round, rounder in the center. It just depends on what you want to do, okay? But it's just very simple, very, very simple. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the background. And I'm going to do that um, with like a buff titanium kind of color. So you can do whatever color you want. I would just keep it very pale. All right, so I'm just going to use a big brush. I'm going to use this color here. It's called, um, I really like it. It's called Oyster. And it's from, I always forget the name. She makes the coconut buttons. I love her paints. Um, I'm sorry, you guys. I'm drawing a blank. Um, if any of you know, you can write it in the comments. I'm drawing a blank but it doesn't really matter. Any buff titanium is fine. And honestly, you can draw right over your, um, you can paint, I'm sorry, right over your, your drawing because this is really light. So whatever color you want, okay? Let the graphite mix into it. Let it be really organic. rustic okay so nothing precious I'm just putting down a little color it can be any color you want truly as long as it's pale enough that black can go over it and tea color can go over it unless you paint around which I don't want to paint around I just want to I just want to put it down. I want, it, I want it to look rustic. And some of my graphite mixed in, and that's fine. Okay? Something like that I need to clean up after myself. All right, and if you want to, at this point, I mean, if you wanted to drop in even another bit of another color somewhere, like, um, I don't know, like right in here, you can.
doesn't matter at all. Just keep it really free flowing and rustic, I call it, I guess. Rustic is a good word. So not precious, okay? Something like that. Keep it, I mean, keep it free. Don't fuss, okay? All right, so that's all I'm gonna do for now. I'm gonna let this dry. It will take a little while because this is cold pressed paper and it's, it's a lot of water. Um, and then I will be back and use my ink. I think I'm just gonna use the carbon ink. Um, and I will, I, I'm gonna get a little tiny um, flower palette to put this in. So we, cause we wanna dilute it just a bit. Okay. Okay, this is dry. And I gotta tell you, this paper dried really crink, like it's the first time it's done that, but I don't know if I've used it for a whole bow hung paper. I'm not crazy about that. All right, so I need Start with our cup because I'm just going to use a little brush and I'm going to paint my cup and I'm going to paint it with a little more water. And I think I'm going to use, I'm going to paint it up here too. Just, just water, okay, above where the tea is going to be. And again, remember, we're doing this very, just very rustically. And I'm going to use, uh, for my bright clear color, I'm going to use a phthalo blue. And so I am just going to touch some blue on my cup. and just leave it very, very subtle, okay? All right, now for our ink. So I'm gonna use the Platinum Carbon ink and I wanna make sure that I'm using a brush that is not a good brush with this, so that's important. This ink is permanent if it dries, but we're using it as a wash. So I'm gonna dip my brush in Take some to the dish. All right, I don't need much. And I'm going to add in a dropper of water, just a little bit of a dropper of water to dilute it. If you use black watercolor, do the same. Just um, black watercolor, not as much. You just use it dark, right? But not crazy dark. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing with this. Um, I am going to just put a little water down and I'm going to include those little handle things see those little knobbers there so I'm just putting some water down only on the body of the teapot Grab some of my ink, and I'm gonna start down here where it's gonna be a little darker. On the right side, because we're always, unless we're doing something specific, we assume that the light is coming from the upper left in Western art. You don't have to, but it's kind of a rule of thumb. Just dropping in the ink. So here's the cool thing. I don't know if any of you have seen some of my teapot paintings um, that are my own work. Um, they're done on big paper, they're big. Um, but I use many, many, many kinds of inks in those. I use one of my ink sticks is 100 years old. Um, and all of the different inks give different results, right? So you see how I'm, I'm allowing the ink to get a little bit lighter? up here at the top. Okay. 
And then I want to go pretty dark down here so I can just drop in more at the bottom. And then just use a little water to let it change. Okay. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the spout, but I'm going to leave the inside of the spout plain. So I'm just taking my brush and I'm putting water with a little bit of ink um, just so I see where I'm going here because I want to keep it away. The tiniest bit of space there, okay? Grab my ink, drop it in. Let it go crazy. Okay, I'm actually going to take a little bit of this platinum carbon ink straight from the bottle and touch it down here while it's still wet. So I get the darkest ink along the bottom and along the right, just touching it in. Okay, rinse my brush and just drop some water in there. Now, while this is still wet, I'm gonna add in some blue. So I'm gonna use that same phthalo blue and I'm just gonna pick a spot to add it and I'm thinking the light's coming here. I'm thinking just sort of add it in like down here. I'm gonna add a little bit more darker ink up in here. I have time. This is wet and it'll take a while to dry. And while it's still wet, I'm going to add a little bit of sparkle. And I chose this mojito. You could use anything. I don't even know how this will look, but I have it. So, and it's just glitter. Um, I'm going to make the glitter point right here. You don't have to do this. It's just me. I like to add a little tiny touch of glitter to things like this. Just a little touch. Okay. Now, I'm going to turn this over. See, this is pooling and my paper's buckling, so it's not moving properly. I'm just going to give it a little, a little help. All right. Now I'm going to do this upper part. Same thing. I'm going to just use water, and I'm going to paint... And I'm going to leave just a tiny bit of space. Same thing, just drop that ink in there and let it go. Okay, and we can always um, go back later and add a little bit of definition there, okay? But and I can even, if I wanted to, I can take a little bit of the blue and push it in on the side. Let's drop some water. I like that little smudge of black there. That's kind of cool. All right. And then on the top, you can, you can either keep with the black handle, all right, or um, you could do a dark brown if you wanted to. I think I'm going to do a dark brown on this one. Just going to use some sepia watercolor. I'm going to add some water to that on this side. See how it's kind of changing and shifting? That's good. Okay, over here, I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna use raw umber from Windsor Newton. Any kind of tea, tea color that you want, you can just add it in there and it's gonna be a little darker on the top. And then you could just 
pull it down like this with water just to make it liquid, liquid looking. All right, over here, I do want to color this in, all right, but I just want to wait. I want to wait until this, the rest of this dries because then we're going to add in a little bit more. Um, don't be afraid to experiment with this part, right? This is just, it's just fun. It's for fun, okay? So I want to ground my teapot. You don't have to. You don't have to put a shadow, but I kind of want to. Um, just put a little bit of water down like this. And some of that blue and black will come out. Just keep it really rustic. Let it go right off the page like that, okay? And the same over here, you could just even take your brush with a little bit of that on it. want to make it a little wider over here just make it so it looks right to you just touch your brush to this and you can just touch it to this shadow keep it really basic okay all right so let's let this dry and then we'll come back and I'm gonna we're gonna use a black pen all right and we're gonna um, add in color where that we have white spaces still but I want to keep that separate for now okay and you can kind of see that my ink did some cool stuff some do some don't so you have to experiment with your inks you just never know never know what they're going to do all right all right let's let this dry and I will be back Okay, so this is still wet and it's been almost an hour and I actually have to leave soon so I'm just going to keep going guys. Um, if Ideally you want to wait until it's completely dry but what we're doing here okay, is taking your brush and filling in the white spaces. So mine's still a little wet so I can just use a damp brush. You may need to use um, you may use a little bit of paint or ink on yours, okay? But I'm not taking it entirely away, but I'm just sort of softening so it's not white, all right? Unless you like the white. Um, I just like to soften it a little bit. There's no reason for it to be pure white. And then in this area here, we just want to make sure, let me just open my water. I took that, I cleaned that ink dish out a while ago because it was taking so long and I didn't want it to ruin my dish because it's permanent ink. Um, so here, same thing, just wet it and then use something dark. Um, I'm just going to make a little gray here with French ultramarine and burnt sienna. And just fill that in so it's not terribly light, okay? So that's really all I would do on the watercolor. Sometimes with these, depending on how the ink dries, like this did some nice things, like some textures, which I like, right? Um, sometimes I might add a little bit more darkness um, to an area. So for instance, like right in here, I might come in, right, and add 
a little bit of darkness just because it would be in shadow and it may have dried too light or something. And here's where, if you are using a reference, just follow the lights and darks on your reference. But typically things that are under like that are gonna be darker, right? And also here, like on this side of the lid, it's gonna be a little darker. Right? And on this side of the little peg, just to give it a little bit of enhancement, if you need to, okay? Simple things like that. Um, also the cup, if you wanted to take and do just a little bit of shadow on the side of your cup, you can, if you feel like it needs that. So you're gonna put it on that way. And I mean, I would just, this is still wet. I just can't believe it. It's been an hour, this paper, I'll tell you. It, I love the paper, but I don't love how it's buckling. It's never done that before. So I don't know if it's because I'm further down on the pad or because I used a wash. I don't know, but either way, shouldn't happen. Um, so now I've got the T in here, and if my cup is dark on this side, the T is going to be a little darker on this side. So it's opposites. Shadows over here. When it's a cup like this, the left side will be darker. And same thing goes for the inside of the cup. It'll be a little darker on this side. And then I can just soften that in, just blend it a little bit. Just gives it gives it a tiny bit of realism, even though we're, we're going for a very rustic feel. Okay? Another thing you can do, um, if you want to, you can soften the edges of your shadow. So I can just take a wet brush, all right, and just, this is an eradicator brush, but any brush would probably work, probably work better actually. Um, that's just gonna lift paint, but I can just take and I can soften the side of the shadow and just blot it if I want to, just so it's not as hard. Um, shadows typically, I mean, sometimes they do, and it's, this is, it doesn't matter. I mean, if it's a little hard, but you can also soften the edge of shadows. So I can just soften with a wet brush and just blot it and it just softens it. Not necessary, but you can if you want. Okay, so at this point, I can either use pencil, I can use pen, I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna show you both. Okay, so this is a black acrylic marker. You could also use a micron pen or anything like that. And I can go in here and just touch a couple places that I want to be um, really dark, okay? Just, just even getting a tiny little bit, see it's still wet, it's crazy. Tiny little bit it's gonna make a difference to go really dark in a few places, all right? So here where the handles meet the little um, handle holders, and then maybe at the very bottom edge of the teapot, you might want it a little bit darker, right? The very bottom. Um, maybe like right here at the edge of the spout, when it tucks in, maybe where it hits the teapot a little bit. So these are just little touches that you can do. Maybe even at the top of the handle right underneath. It might be a little darker up there. The teacup is so light you don't need to, but if your teacup was dark you could also do that. Um, just in a couple spots. It doesn't, you don't need too much, okay? But those dark, dark accents do make a difference, right? So this, this side over here would be in shadow if the light was hitting the other side, okay? And I'm just gonna use a pencil here just to fill in that little spout like that. 
okay. You can also um, use pencil to do all of those same things. You can use pencil to enhance, like I want, want to enhance where the lid meets the teapot kind of thing. Pencils also work really well to just give a little bit of definition to a few places. All right. Um, and pencils actually would work really well for your cup. So you could just enhance this edge over here and maybe this lip of the cup over here. Just a little bit, little tiny touches like that. Okay. And really, this is all I would do. Um, I would keep it really simple. And every time you do it, all right, just explore with different inks, different watercolors, different materials. Make it mixed media, okay? Don't, you know, use fountain pen inks. Use, use drawing inks. Whatever inks you have, gather what you have, all right, and explore. Because I guarantee you with what you have already, you will be able to find some really cool things that you can do. I want this a little darker here. All right, and then when I'm done, I like to put my chop in red. And just find a place that's pleasing to you. And it's not gonna look good because it's on cold pressed paper, but it's still there. Just to push it really hard and jiggle it around a little bit. And you won't see my signature so much, but it's still there. If you are new here and you don't know what a chop is, I have um, I have a YouTube video about it, so you can check that out. And the reason why I toned the paper is it just gives it a little bit of an antique sort of rustic look. All right, it's not um, it's not so much about color. You could put color on it, all right, but for me, it's really about just sort of aging it giving it an older patina, I guess. Yeah. All right, everybody, that's it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I can't wait to see what you come up with on your own. This is one of those projects where I'm sort of saying, saying find your own way here. I'm showing you the steps, all right? How simple it can be. And then you can find, um, find your way. For this project in particular, what I don't wanna see is perfect, right? I want to see wabi sabi. <laughs> if you know, if you know that term, I want to see wabi. I want to see imperfection um, and rustic imperfection, and um, I want to see you playing with different materials so you can discover textures. Um, I want to see the pencil marks coming through. Um, I want to see lopsidedness. I don't want to see perfection in any way. All right. I want to see the charming qualities of authentic, just putting it down, all right, and not being precious about it. This should not take, as you saw, the time it took to draw and paint is hardly anything, all right? This is not a long, a long um, extended project. This is just something you could probably do in 15 minutes, not including drawing time, okay? All right. Thank you very much, and I will see you tomorrow to finish our beautiful magnolia bud. All right, take care, everybody.